Cheers, guys. Epix911, welcome to the Elitist Geek VR News for Tuesday, November 1st, 2016. Holy crap, time is a flying. Can you believe it's been seven month, months since the Rift and Vive launch? There's times where it seems like a long time, like I've lived every one of those seven months in slow motion. And then there's other times where, just like that, like the blink of an eye, I can't believe seven months has gone by. We've seen so much. October, crazy busy month. Uh, and I foresee that being the case with November as well. Probably not as crazy because that was the Sony PlayStation VR launch month. Whereas I don't think Daydream is going to garner the same amount of hype and marketing campaign behind it. But it's still going to be a pretty good month for virtual reality. I, I still strongly stand behind that statement. Two to four weeks for some quality games to get announced. Now, let's talk about Oculus in the preamble and their uh, title Dead and Buried. So in a blog post today they stated that they were going to offer that Oculus Touch launch title for free. So alongside VR Sports Challenge and The Unspoken, both of which are also free, that makes three free Touch launch titles, which is pretty damn good. Uh, now, you could look at that if you're a, you know, a glass half empty person as opposed to half full and have your suspicions and you know what? you'd be joining me because I'm definitely skeptical about that. Common sense would dictate it's a PR move to, you know, win back, win back some PR really for what was a disastrous launch. Such an abysmal supply chain gong show. It could honestly be used as a case study for students. Like that's how bad it was. So, Hopefully, they've learned from that. The touch launch ends up being smooth. Demand is met. If that all happens, yeah, this will have been a good move. But if the Oculus Touch release, for some reason, goes belly up and turns into a gong show, I don't think it's going to matter if it's one free game or ten. There's going to be some more collateral damage at that point. Hopefully, it doesn't come to that. Next up, Elite Dangerous. Now, this is a game that many of you who've watched my videos for a while know I am a huge fan of. Love this game. Uh, one of the main reasons excited about VR was to play a space game like Elite. So when it was announced that it would have virtual reality support, suffice it to say, I was hooked right then. And I, you know, since that time, I've literally looked up everything I could, followed the development kit stuff, ultimately settled on the Rift uh, commercial. I think it offers the best Elite Dangerous experience. It is my favorite game still in VR, period. And you could look at that and say, yeah, but you know, Epix is not really fully realized. It's just the cockpit and it's not the ground up a VR game. No, I would agree with you on all those points, except the most important one to me is that it is a hell of a lot of fun. I love the game and the fact that it's VR just so much gravy on top of that. The fact that I can feel like I'm sitting in my own spaceship is just, honestly, it's a geek dream come true. Every time I start to get a little bored with the game, and I, I won't use the word bored, but you know, want to put it down for a little while, they come out with some kind of content that reels me right back in. Their latest 2.2 update, a perfect example of that. Uh, reeled me right back in, the ability to hire pilots, uh, you know, do transport of people, like the luxury liner stuff, aesthetics, new weapons, new ships, just a lot of new content, all part of the horizons. So if you bought that season pass for it, it's free. If you didn't, it's not going to cost you an arm and a leg, but I think you'll appreciate what it does offer. Definitely revitalizes the game. All right, first news story. And uh, actually, you know what, before I jump into the news story, I want to say this. The other reason, it's not a justification, it's just for context so people understand. When Elite first came out, and those of you who 
played it when it first came out, whether it was the Commodore, the BBC Micro, whatever platform you played it on, it was mind-blowing. It was everything the VR version is now back then because it showed an entire galaxy of possibilities in 3D. True 3D as far as the user, the game player was concerned, right? You could fly in space, trade, had RPG elements. In short, just a beefy, awesome, involved game. That hasn't changed. Thus, the excitement for me personally, as high as ever. And I liked Frontier. A lot of people thought it was a buggy mess, and admittedly it was. Patched all up and with some fan love, still a fantastic game to play, even if I didn't like the Newtonian uh, physics in it. All right, there is an upcoming conference. It's Think of it as a mini game developers conference. It's called the VRDC. It focuses on virtual reality. It's going to be at the Park Central Hotel in San Francisco, a two-day event. Uh, that's coming up this month. Uh, details, more details in the description below. What I wanted to signal out or single out for this was more some of the talks being given. And there's some really cool talks. If you happen to live near there and this is something you were going to, please let me know because some of these, and try to get into one of these talks. They sound amazing. So first one, applications of eye tracking in VR. This one is huge, not just for eye tracking sake, but the technologies that eye tracking assists with. Perfect example, foveated rendering. To use it in a practical sense, you need to have eye tracking mastered. With eye tracking done, it becomes that much more feasible, resource-wise and lots of other reasons, to employ those techniques, right? So uh, that's eye tracking. Smartphone AR, Tango and You, that's another topic. Tango is Google's augmented reality side of the equation, as opposed to the VR side, which is Daydream. Third topic, and there's more than just these, but these are the ones that stood out for me. Beyond games, VR as the next mass medium. So simply put, all the other things other than games that VR can, will, is excelling at. And there's Definitely some cool non-gaming stuff, as we've talked about from time to time in the news. And then the last talk that I have listed here is hand track controls, design and implementation for serious VR. So this is where hopefully all the controller innovation comes to the forefront, right? I'd love to get more information on some of the prototypes that we saw. Uh, just amazing potential, like that HTC Vive prototype. That one has me drooling. Just the possibilities with that open grip. That's where it sold me. Just fantastic looking. All right. Next news story. Unity hires VRML co-creator Tony Parisi uh, in bid for VR dominance. Now, if you don't know who, who he is, check the link below. Uh, read up on him. I think you'll be impressed. But he's, uh, you know, worked for some pioneers in what we now know as virtual reality. Now, granted, it was more primitive in the early 90s, the first go around, but no less important, and the fundamentals no less important to pursue. So even back then, something like VRML, which was virtual reality markup for VR web-based content, right? He worked on that. Now, as uh, you know, somebody working for Unity, he gets to bring all that expertise to the table. So really excited about what he has to offer. His own words, and I'll just read this here. We think that immersive technologies like VR and AR represent the next computing platform. We're not just going to be using VR and AR to make games. We're going to tell stories and create worlds. We're going to design and sell products, make compelling presentations, and understand complex data. So saying all the right things, hopefully do all the right things, and the end result should be pretty magical. Next news story. We have a concrete release from Alienware. 
using one of those cool new VR-ready mobile GPU sets, namely the 1060 in mobile form. There's four configurations I saw on their webpage. I'm going to talk about the first two. There's an 8 gigabyte one, and the hardware, the rest of it on there, just so you know, uh, it's 13-inch screen with an H-series quad-core i7. That powers all four. There's the first one, which is 8 gigabytes of DDR4, which is fine for virtual reality, clocks in at 1,199 US. So basically 1,200 bucks for a laptop with essentially a 1060, almost as fast as a desktop 1060. So damn good. And the next one is a 16 gigabyte model, 1499, so 1500, still $300 difference. 16 gigs RAM. I'd be interested in seeing how easy it is to upgrade the RAM, right? Is there a cheaper route? Buy the 8. Can you upgrade it? Or are you screwed with how they've arranged the DIMMs? That I'm not sure. All right. Unity. Next news piece. Unity's planning to release in VR authoring tool next month. So at the same Unite 2016 keynote in LA that I talked about, uh, Amir Ebrahimi, he's the principal engineer for Unity Labs, he confirmed that the InVR editor will be launching in December. He showed some of the capability and he also went on to say, and I really thought this part was kind of cool, it's going to be completely open source with an open API. So well done Unity on that, fantastic move in my opinion. Next news story has to do with Google Daydream. So the view arrives next week and there's a launch window lineup that I'm going to post here. So take a look at some of these titles. So this is for the November 10th Daydream launch. So you can see right on the top of the list, Hulu, YouTube. So you see some streaming services. Below that, you've got games, magazines, publications like the Wall Street Journal, The Guardian, and again, games like Gunjack 2, which seems to be kind of the staple du jour for a lot of the other mobile slash not quite desktop solutions. All right, next news story. Uh, Google, kind of like Oculus with their Santa Cruz prototype, has announced that wireless positional tracking is essentially solved for them but that there is still an issue. So I'm going to read, this is from Johnny Lee. He is Google's Tango Director of Engineering. Now, again, Tango refers to the augmented reality portion. So he said, gesturing at the Tango-powered Lenovo Fab 2 Pro smartphone, which we're gonna talk about in a few minutes. As you can see, inside-out positional tracking clearly works on this phone. We've even had people strap a tablet-sized device with Tango built in into a custom VR headset and the positional tracking worked just as well as it does here. He goes on to talk about the added demands of split screen and stereoscopic image, et cetera, et cetera, 90 frames per second. And that's where he talks about the heat issue that that currently exists and they have to figure out a way to deal with that issue. Now he declined to acknowledge when consumers can expect to see that in the market, but, uh, Another person from Tangle, this time uh, Nikhil Chandok, who's the director of product, concurred with Lee and added this. We have it working. We can do inside-out tracking with six degrees of movement, and we can do it today. There are just some concerns we need to address first. For example, how do you keep people safe when they are walking around freely with a headset on? The VR use cases are just much more demanding than what we're doing right now. However, there will be more interesting use cases in the future. So very cool to read that. I am very much looking forward to announcements coming out of that camp. So I just touched on it, but the Lenovo Fab 2 Pro is essentially the first AR smartphone that's powered by Google Tango. Again, the augmented reality portion. Now, this is the impressive part. I'm gonna show you guys two phones here. So let's show you my original iPhone 6, right? Next to the Note 7, now defunct. Essentially the same size, right? So we can put that down and show you 
my galaxy my galaxy compared to the Note 7. So Note 7 Galaxy. So you can see the size difference, right? The Note 7 is essentially 5.5 inches, I believe, or thereabouts, really close. The new phone, the Tango one from Lenovo, comes in at a whopping 6.4 inches, essentially another inch on the diagonal, which is huge. Now, how huge is that? Well, in my opinion, you're almost at that point where you can't call it a phablet anymore. You're pretty much into tablet territory, right? Because you're getting in on the seven inches and tablets start the small ones at seven and eight inches. Now, you could argue rounding down, you're still a little closer to, um, you know, phones like the Note 7 or the iPhone, but yeah, I'm not quite buying that. You're getting pretty big. All right, next and last news story, PlaySnack has received $1.3 million in funding for their mobile and VR gaming initiatives. Now, Paha Schultz, he's the founder of PlaySnack. He's got industry experience. He's worked for Crytek, uh, also worked for Electronic Arts. He recently announced that they are going to maintain focus or direct focus towards mobile and VR gaming. Uh, as well as publishing. Now, they received the 1.3 million seed investment from a company called K-Cube Ventures. You can look these guys up. I was pretty impressed. They typically will invest 100,000 to $2 million for a company working on, you know, something of interest to them. So these guys, like I said, they got the 1.3 million, which is fantastic. Um, now, based on this uh, investment, it's pretty clear that they have some inkling of PlaySnack being important to them uh, and to their future. So, very cool. PlaySnack, for their part, and I really like this, is we know what they want to do with VR games and mobile gaming. But the other thing that they want to do, it's almost like a mission statement, is they want to bring Asian and Western gaming markets closer together not just to become a true global player themselves, but to just make gaming across regions more straightforward. And case in point is getting rid of some of the region locking, some of the other nonsense, right? There's things that are legit, absolutely. Um, personally, that's an area that I always thought we should be more flexible in. So nice to see that. All right, guys, that's it for the news. As always, cheers, and definitely catch you on the VR flip side.